Hello, this is MechJ101, and here's my soldering station, and I have some bad news. It failed. So, I'm not saying this is a bad unit. I think I just got a faulty unit. So, um, but good news is I did get my money um, fully refunded, so I didn't lose a penny on this, luckily. Um, and the guy didn't want me to ship it back to him. I guess, basically, if, if I shipped it back to him, then we'd probably both lose money. So, um... <clears throat> But, um, so, guys, if you're e leery about buying things on eBay, my number one tip for you is make sure it is a trusted buyer, or, I mean, seller. Um, so make sure he has a lot of um, good reviews, probably at least 90% or better um, feedback, um, good feedback, so, um, and then you should be good. You just send him a message, and if, you're, if your unit fails like mine did, you send him a message and say, tell him exactly what happened, and... If he's a trusted seller, he will um, do something, or he will do everything in his power, pretty much, to make sure that you are a happy customer, <laughs> because he doesn't want you to leave a bad review on his um, eBay page. So, um, so mine, it was actually faulty out of the box, I believe, according to a couple other people on YouTube who have posted videos of um, their soldering stations that are exactly the same, um, same model and everything. Um, one of them is um, Spida Design. I will have his... Um, video linked in the description, so go check that out. But he actually shows in his video that the displays actually do show the real temperature. So mine must be faulty. Now actually, it failed as well. Um, about three hours after I was um, I was soldering for, with it for about three hours, it was going okay. It seemed as though the um, tips were corroding very quickly. Um, and I'll get back to that in a, more in a minute. But the heating element failed. It just stopped working. It was dead cold then. And I was like, hmm, I don't know what happened to it. So I took it apart and tested the heating element. And the heating element is these two um, wires here. The red and the um, blue wires are the, whatever the heat feedback, the feedback loop. Um, so it's probably a thermistor or something like that. Those have gone open circuit. So without that, it's not gonna um, this, it's not gonna keep feeding power into it. So that failed after about three hours. I was very disappointed in that. So I replaced it with the one, the extra one that came with it, and it worked again for about oh probably 20 minutes, and it failed. So so I contacted him, and he gave me a refund on it. So now I'm um, not leery to go ahead and poke around it, and it because I don't I doesn't really matter too much if I break something <laughs> because I don't have to return it. Um, but I actually did get the hang of using the, um, the heat gun um, and I was able to desolder all these nice components. So actually when I put these um, smaller tips on like this it actually restricts the airflow and thus would um, cool the heating elements off less so it wouldn't have to turn on as much. So you're actually re decreasing the wattage as well so you're not going to heat up components very fast with a small um, nozzle like that. You might be able to get very precise accuracy, but it's not going to be much heat. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so actually, it could have been malfunctioning the whole time and not displaying the real temperature. Um, or, well, obviously wasn't displaying the real temperature, it was displaying basically position of these knobs, which is quite useless. Um, so, my thought is that also these um, tips were getting very, very corroded. And um, so I was thinking that maybe, um, maybe it was actually totally not working at all and it totally overheated these tips. So my guess is that there's some kind of an error in the circuitry. So I'm going to have to um, go over this very closely and see if I can, this board here is actually the driver board for the, um, the soldering iron. So it could be something on here. Um, and then there's the display board, but I'm thinking it's something with the display board because it's both of them. Um, this only drives, I believe, for the soldering iron, and the heat gun is also is actually on here, I believe. So, because here, these two black wires right here are actually going to the pump, which is most of it. And then we have two semiconductors here, um, probably, uh, oh, what are those called? The ones that switch AC, I'm guessing those are those or those switch AC, as well as this too, because there's no bridge rectifier diodes in here. There's only the diode, one diode on here for the circuitry, for the control circuitry. So, I'm going to have to poke around in here and see if I can figure it out. Alright, so I tried switching these connections around because it's just not logical to have 
um, one connection one way, so this plug is that way, and then this plug is, these two plugs are the other way, and then this one's that way. There's no indicator of which way it's supposed to be. Well, actually on this side there sort of is, and on this side they all look like they they should be the same. Now the other thing I don't understand is why this cord here, so this one goes to connection 3, it goes over here and connects right there, and that's supposed to be a 200... And 20 microfarad 16 volt capacitor. Um, okay, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe that's where the power is coming from because, oh well, no, this is actually the power here, I believe. Yes, that's the power here coming from the transformer. I believe the yellow is 10, 10 volts. Yeah. <clears throat> so, that doesn't make sense. The other thing that's a little suspicious is this chip appears to be in backwards. So we've got the little notch here, and then over here in the holder we have the notch over there. But in the um, the silk screen, the notch is over here. So the notches according to the silk screen are lined up correctly, but the holder is in backwards. So this seems like a very cheaply made board. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, so according to the according to the silk screen, this plug here is actually backwards. So maybe I should try flipping that one around and see what happens. But yeah, it's a little bit um, uh, cheap. But I mean, I did pay seventy-five dollars for it. So I mean, it's not supposed to be the best, I suppose. I probably should have gone with a better quality one. But um, well got it for free now <laughs> because it broke so <laughs> so that's nice I guess it's nice of the um, eBay seller very nice of him to um, give it to me for free then after it failed so very thankful that I didn't lose my money on it um, but so I'll try reversing a couple more of these in different um, configurations and see what happens I don't think I should reverse that chip though because it is um, correct according to the silk screen so but yeah um, so we'll try poking around a bit more and we'll see what happens. Alright, so I haven't figured out why it's not working, but, um, I did find a couple other things that are kind of cheap. Um, so these connections here seem to only be on-off, um, for each display. So there's one here that controls this display on and off, and one here that controls this display on and off. That's what it seems to do, at least. Um, I would think that that would be the temperature feedback from the um, thermal couple, or I mean the thermistor probably, but um, it doesn't seem to be. Because if you disconnect it, it the display turns off. If you plug it in, the display turns on. If you reverse it, the display still stays off. So, not sure what those plugs are for. These only um, are connected to the potentiometers, the secondary potentiometers, so they're only going to show the position of the knob, so not really sure how that's supposed to work, because on the board these seem to only be connected across the power which would be connected if this switch is off there'd be no power here, so I'm confused, I don't know. It doesn't seem to have any sort of actual temperature display on here. It seems to only show the position of the knob. But I'm not sure. So, yeah. Um, hmm. The other thing that I don't like... So, the soldering iron is actually grounded. As you can see, this, ground, this little grounding spring here. Um, so that's good. But the heat gun is not grounded which I'm quite uh, disappointed in because it is supposed to be ESD safe and that should be grounded totally um, because if you and plus the now the soldering iron runs on 24 volts this runs on 120 volts so this is much bigger um, concern I would say um, but so actually the transformer is only the 24 volts powers the 
soldering iron, and the 10 volts powers the um, control circuitry, and then 120 volts goes through these resistors here, and through um, one of, I, I believe that's what the resistors are for, I think that's what I figured out, and then through one of these, I'm not, I forget which one, um, and then to the, uh, the heat gun. So that's not very safe. <laughs> that really should be grounded, especially when the heating elements are just so close to that metal and 120 volts is going through that. Also, I really dislike the very flimsy wiring. This is the 120 volts going through here as well as the soldering iron goes through the same type of wire and that is, I believe it's about an amp or two going through that wire. That's just not really rated for that much current. So I'm not pleased there. But, um, yeah. So it's somewhat poorly made, I would have to say. So, but, um, as you can see, it can actually be reconfigured in quite a different um, configuration because the knobs are actually on here as well. So, because it seems like this company, there's actually quite a few of them that look very, very, very similar. It's just that they have a different model number, but they do basically the same thing, but they look a little different. So I think the same manufacturer in China makes them all, or makes parts for them all, and then other manufacturers um, combine the parts or something like that. So, but um, the board back here is a little bit, it looks like it was repaired or something. So, not sure about that. And then the other thing, I did replace this capacitor here. Um, it was just a little 16 volt, 200 um, microfarad, 220 microfarad capacitor, and it was getting quite hot. So I decided that's actually the filtering capacitor from the um, 10 volts right here. Or actually, this 10 volts only powers this board. It looks like. But um, yeah. So I tried reversing a couple more of these in different configurations. It, if you reverse these as you would expect it just um, means that this is going to be the um, hundred degrees and this is going to be the 500 opposite of what it is so that doesn't really do anything and then this if you reverse it it doesn't it just doesn't work at all so I am not sure the other thing that I tried um, was actually these um, plugs for the LEDs I tried also reversing those with the, this plug here, I tried swapping those, and that didn't have any effect either. It didn't work at all either. But it, I mean, it still works now. It didn't burn anything out. But um, so yeah, um, yeah. This is actually the the wires are going to the soldering iron are very flimsy, and there's a lot of coating. So it's really, really stiff wire. Even though the wire could be a lot smaller because there's a lot of coating there that really doesn't need to be there so it's very kind of stiff and large but it has kind of like a memory so um yeah overall not so good um <laughs> but um the heat gun seems pretty good i do like the heat gun um wish the temperature would actually work but um so yeah that is the full review and um failure of this um uh, power SMD rework station. Um, yeah, that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. Alright, so one more thing before I go. If one of you guys who has the same um, 8000 uh, model as me wouldn't mind um, taking the cover off of yours and just either showing me some or um, uploading some pictures or a video of um, what this boards and stuff in yours look like, because I'm wondering if maybe this one just doesn't have the capability to show the actual temperature which would really stink but um because i just don't see a way where the um, the information from the thermocouples or the um, thermistors is actually going to be able to get to this display other than these two wires here and these two wires here but those seem to be the on off for each display so and those get 6.2 volts which is actually the power supply um, or like the, there's a little, um, the power supply is actually a 6.2 volt Zener diode and that kind of regulates the power or the voltage. So I'm not sure if, maybe if you wouldn't mind also taking a voltage reading off of these pins and telling me what that is because maybe 
these are hooked up wrong or something because I'm just getting 6.2 volts there no matter what maybe those are supposed to be the actual um, analog output from the um, thermistor or something I'm not sure so that's about it so if one of you guys could do that for me that would be awesome um, that's about it guys thanks for watching